You know, we have really come a long way since the beginning of intravitreal injections in that era that started in the early 2000s when we initially had some guidance about how to do our intravitreal injections and the protocols involved in that. But as time has gone on, everybody has developed so many different ways they give intravitreal injections because they're really just so frequently given by basically every retina specialist nearly in the world. So there are so many variables, whether you use a lid speculum or not, whether you use gloves when you treat a patient, whether you use antibiotics at the time of their visit, et cetera, et cetera. There are many, many different ways people do it. With all of the different ways over the, for, over the course of time, people have done studies to try to figure out what is the safest way so that we can minimize endophthalmitis. And the only consistent feature that ever really came out of it was the use of povidone iodine. No other variable, at least to date, had shown anything that correlates. So we have a very large practice with a lot of injectors and we do a lot of uh, treatment of diabetic macular edema, macular degeneration, retinal vein occlusions with all of the drugs that are available. So we wanted to look back and see within our practice, did our endophthalmitis rates uh, stack up, first of all, with other reported rates, and could we identify particular reasons why people developed endophthalmitis? So we went back through a period of about 39 months and found uh, all of the cases that were uh, treated by physicians who had consistent protocols. They didn't change it up, they really did it the same way every time. And we've had 15 injecting physicians whose data we collected over that time, all consecutive patients, all consecutive injections over that time span. And we excluded people that had bilateral injections because we didn't want any confounding variables from the other eye being treated. And we excluded, of course, the physicians who had changing protocols. So in, in doing all of that, we ended up with 99,000 injections that were done unilaterally by consistent methods by the 15 treating physicians. And then we broke everything down, all of the various parameters that you can think of, whether you used a lid speculum, where is the location of the injection, did you use subconjunctival <clears throat> anesthesia or not, did you use lidocaine gel, did you use a heavy viscous anesthetic like tetravisc before the injection, and location of injection, various parameters. We subjected them to a univariate analysis, and then we further subjected all of the positive indicators into a multivariable analysis to try to identify whether or not there was any independent risk. And the only thing that came out of it was that the use of viscous topical anesthetics like lidocaine gel or the use of tetravisc, which is a heavy tetragain, tetracaine uh, material, correlated with a significant increased risk of endophthalmitis. Lidocaine gel 11 times the risk of the others and the tetravisc four times the risk. Every other independent variable, including no talking or talking, uh, gloves, lid spec, none of that had any impact, only the use of viscous, lidoc viscous lidocaine type products. So, you know, from all of that, we really sort of narrowed down where we found our endophthalmitis problem. From our practice, we've eliminated the use of those viscous anesthetic gels either before or uh, after betadine uh, application. And uh, we've found a much re a significant reduction in our practice of endophthalmitis. Fortunately, our endophthalmitis rate did compare favorably even before with other published series of about one in 2,700 eyes is what we had found, including the viscous anesthetic patients. So yes, you asked you know, that about really what ultimately was our endophthalmitis rate, given the fact that we had so many patients and so many injecting physicians and so many techniques. And when you take all comers, that rate was about 0.04%, which um, stacks up pretty well with the published literature, as well as the most recent really big uh, multi-center um, study meta-analysis that looked at 43 studies and came up with a rate that was far higher than that.